The Super Duke R's dominion in the motorcycle world is like Cununus, the ancient Gaelic god of beasts. Its disciples coming to the altar for all that is uncivilized in the motorcycle world. But with the competition heating up in the super naked sector and all the top manufacturers bringing their best artillery to the battle with sporting credentials, KTM had a classic conundrum. How do we keep the congregation happy and fend off an all new breed of competition? Enter the Beast 3.0. Leaner, meaner, faster and sharper than ever, the 1290 Super Duke R brings an all new character to the table. In an incredible way, KTM have managed to combine all of the attributes that made the Super Duke R famous with all of the attributes that makes a motorcycle excellent to ride aggressively and safely. My expectations of riding this bike was largely tied to its reputation. Uncivilized, wheeling everywhere, a real untamed beast. After 10 minutes of riding it, my expectations couldn't have been further from the truth. This bike is sports bike accurate, stable, sharp and confidence inspiring. A really engaging blend of naked and sports characteristics with a planted and secure stance. The Super Duke R is a no compromise super naked and that's awesome. Yet by gaining those attributes takes nothing away from its hooligan capacity. Want to throw a wheelie at it? Do a rolling burnout? Slide the rear into a corner? The Super Duke will not only oblige, it will frankly relish the opportunity. The 1300cc V-twin engine is the showpiece of the machine, pumping out 180 horsepower and 103 foot-pounds of tyre shredding torque. The instant mid-range punch available from this motor is hard to explain in words, but it translates to a sensation that always makes you feel like you have amazing snap and grunt available. And the drama is not just at the bottom end. This engine is as linear as a 1300cc V-twin can be, with amazing power right up to the red line. As part of our performance testing, we took the Super Duke R in excess of 150 miles an hour, and in full throttle acceleration, it was the more planted, predictable machine to consistently get fast results on in comparison to the Kawasaki ZH2. Parting thanks to a rock solid chassis, steering damper, suspension, and ergonomics. Getting the best road going enjoyment on the Super Duke R involves frequent changing up and down the gearbox and this is made a joy with an incredible quick shifter. Then there's the handling of the Super Duke. Most manufacturers advertise bikes like these on track, but the real world delivery is often quite different. The Beast 3.0 feels like it's on rails and there is little compromise in the road going handling department in comparison to any motorcycle. Contributing to this effect is an all new chassis, revised ergonomics with more weight on the front wheel and the highest quality suspension setup available in 2020. The ability of the fully adjustable WP Apex suspension to provide a firm but plush setup that simultaneously is able to soak up road going bumps and imperfections and yet deliver incredible feelings of sharpness is just outstanding. Connecting the Duke to the tarmac are the Bridgestone S22 tyres, which give great confidence. KTM collaborated with Bridgestone to develop the 200 rear section tyre for the bike, giving it a wider contact patch, something that you really appreciate with the amount of torque on offer. At the EICMA launch last year, much was made of the Brembo Stylema calipers featured on the Super Duke R, a more premium and powerful setup peppered with holes to make them lighter and induce airflow to the brakes. These live up to the hype. The stopping power of the Super Duke is next level, leaving many other bikes feeling that they've got drum brakes in comparison. The amount of bite, power and confidence available in the brake and tyre setup is unbeatable and adds to the razor sharp feelings of the beast. The Super Duke also has 
class-leading electronics with a six-axis IMU sending data to all of the rider aids fitted to the bike. In a bike that's got so much grunt and instant power, the electronics package complements the ride and delivers a much needed safety net for riders looking to build their confidence. And if you want to get the best out of the Super Duke, you really need to buy the tech pack enabling the quick shifter up and down, track mode, launch control, slip control, and anti wheelie off. The tech pack costs an additional £830 to the base model. If you're considering purchasing the Super Duke R, factor the tech pack into your budget. In our case, we wouldn't consider purchasing the Super Duke without the tech pack add on. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But if the beholder is the majority of the motorcycle market, they've made their comments crystal clear on the Knox channel already. The line work, feel of the build quality and design consideration is second to none. The Super Duke R is razor sharp, angular. Its aggressive looks are matched to how it rides. The single-sided swing arm, stunning. The glass screen, instrumentation, and the weight of the body panels all really premium. The looks and tangible feel are market leading and the colorway of the blue carefully mixed with orange is absolutely show stopping. This is a 16,000 pound bike and it feels every part of it. So Ollie, you've been riding the Super Duke with us the last couple of days. We've had a laugh, haven't we? Oh, it's been heaps of fun, you know. Um, what do you think? It's just been a crazy few days, you know. We've done everything from riding on a runway, doing 140, 50, 60 mile an hour, and we've done a few passes up in the lake joystick. So, yeah, it's, it's a beast. I've fallen in love with it a little bit, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for me, riding a bike, enjoyment factor is massive, and, you know, KTM mm. brand it as this, you know, road bike with the track focus, but it's, you know, the seat's comfortable, the, contr uh, the controls on them are exactly where you want them to be and just all the ergos of it are just really, really great, I think, so, yeah. Yeah, well, the jig range, and I have to say, like, KTM make some of the most fun bikes, and yep. obviously this is the chart topper, in it? I For mean, sure, yeah, Like, the, the, the torque on this... <laughs> it's unreal, you know, second, third, any gear you want, basically, it's just, it's just grunt. You know, and yeah. it's, it's the V twin is just an absolute beast. To know? be fair, I, I kind of think this suits the way that you ride, or you yeah. would like to ride. Yeah, on, definitely on, on a track like this. You know, like because it is, it's, it's, you know, we've been doing some burnouts, wheelies, all that kind of stuff. You know, definitely. And this is the. This is it just shrugs it off. You know, anything you throw at it, it will just shrug it off, and you can just, you know, you can ride it how you want to ride it, and it definitely gets your heart going. It does. Um, you know. Yeah. The, I've been smiling, you know, my, my, my cheek muscles hurt under my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> big, big smiles all around, you know, wheelies, burnouts, top speeds, just the yeah. pure acceleration of it is just, it, it just pulls you back and it's just rapid basically. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, but it's a good bit of kit. But, you know, uh, and, and you've ridden the, uh, the previous version quite a yep. bit, I would have said. Yeah, sure, yeah, I mean, I've, I've ridden a few times, but yeah, I think the, there's quite a big difference between this and the previous one. Exactly, yeah. I mean, the second gen, and even, well, the first gen was just a raw animal. You know, they've definitely, every time they've um, researched the different um, aspects of the bike that need ironing out, I think mm. they've they've done that with the first to second and the second to the third, and this is, you know, where, where it's, uh, where it's at now and it's from my understanding it's a lot more sports orientated a lot exactly more yeah the the ergo and it certainly changed. feels like that doesn't it exactly yeah i mean first thing i noticed straight away you it's a lot more nosy you look right over the front a bit more mm. um and you know the handlebars and the seat and everything is just it just feels good it feels right you know it's comfortable and the, the buttons are exactly where you want them to be and little things like that it's just sweet as <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah well, I mean, I haven't Happy. ridden the, I haven't ridden the previous generations, but I can't imagine like a bike be, that would be sort of more willing to get up in the front, uh, you know, get the wheel up in in the air. Definitely, yeah. Um, it, but apparently, the previous ones are a bit more like that. So yeah. This is a bit more refined, I think. Definitely, yeah. I mean, the the previous gen, you are slightly more upright, and the bars are a bit higher. So you know, it, it does want to wheelie a bit more, but not saying this thing doesn't wheelie it will all day long so <laughs> yes yeah, i absolutely love it it's, it's, it's an amazing bit of kit to be honest so yeah. so it, it is more sports oriented but it's not a sports bike no definitely not i mean it's it's a naked bike built for the street but with a sort of a track focus so yeah that that pretty much sums it up doesn't it definitely. because the high speed stuff 
<laughs> neck breaking. <laughs> neck <laughs> breaking, to like a... heart stopping. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the, this one though is more stable than the ZH2 we were doing. For sure. On, yeah, I mean, more stable in every aspect. You know, accelerating. It seems more planted. It doesn't wobble too much. And also on braking, we were talking about earlier. You know, the, the uh, Stylema brakes are just. You know, they would just stop you as fast or as slow as you want. You know, one or two finger braking, it, it would just stop you on a sixpence, basically. <laughs> um, but yeah, regardless, um, with regards to the design, you know, we spoke about it. I don't think there's another bike on the market with such like angular lines and different shapes on the bike. And some of the shots we got it, it's just, you know, really pretty motorcycles. So yeah, beautiful. Happy. Yeah. Any, any, any downsides for you? Um, a couple, I've got to say, you know, um, trying to do the, the, the straight uh, line speed, you know, the launch control was a couple of times it would work and then a couple of times it wouldn't, which is slightly weird, um, even though it was all on in the settings and stuff. So another thing we came across was the indicators decided not to turn off, you know, they were stuck on um, and also the horn for some reason. So little little niggles like that I think KTM might need to sort out. Yeah. But other than that, you know, engine suite, suspension, brakes, everything seems solid. The gearbox as well. Banging. Banging. You know, <laughs> no false neutrals, no nothing. You know, it's positive. The blipper and quick shift on it is just sublime, you know. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And yeah. the supermoto mode you like. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, the limited slip on the supermoto ABS mode. You can just bang it down the box and have a bit of fun and squirm around. But it, you know, the ABS is still active on the front, so it allows you to stop, but it's really controlled and nice, and you can have a bit of fun, so. Really happy overall, I think. Very good, very good, <laughs> so you're a fan. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. So that's been our review of the Beast 3.0. I've got a huge amount of respect for this motorcycle and the kind of people that want to get involved in what this does. I absolutely love it. And, you know, reliability sort of little niggles aside, I think it's an absolutely awesome bike. So I hope you've enjoyed the review. I'm gonna put all the links in the description for the gear that we've been using to protect us on test. You can find them uh, below right now. Um, please like, please comment, love to hear what you think about this and other stuff that we're doing. And subscribe to the channel too, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.